let's get into this Dorian Renaud. Um, Renaud. I'm going to just say it. Because I don't know why people are trying to say Dorian Renaud. He said his name was Dorian Renaud. That's what we're going to call him. He said himself in the damn confessional. So I'm going by what the man said. Now, y'all remember Dorian because he was first introduced to us in 2008 when he premiered on College Hill Atlanta, the show that was on BET. Soon after, the Texas native gave great, had, you know, he was a model, he graced the paid his Vogue, he was a host on NBC's Extra, he was also an actor, he was on the show called In the Cut, which was on Bounce TV, I wouldn't even know where that channel was if you pointed it to me. You showed me where it was. But you know, in 2018, he, he launched the skin line Butter, which provides black men and women with attainable solutions for their pressing skincare concerns. Now you know the show the 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 skincare line is very successful. And you know you can go to BCs and all that other stuff and you get you some of that good old butter skincare. And so I know a lot of people was like, because I did hear people say, well, with all this money, he's got so much money and he's a, he's a successful guy, this and the third. Why would he do a show like The Real Friends of WeHo? And I'm like, why not? First of all, it's like, yeah, I have a lot of money. I'm successful as a businessman. But um, what the show will provide is an outlet and an audience for me to showcase my work. That's what a lot of people do. They have brands inside of their, and they use these reality shows to promote their brand. That's why a lot of people do the reality shows. Then they get caught up in the matrix of the fame and it becomes a whole nother, you know, situation. So, you know, we're not even going to get into the show being panned and inside the third. He's going to get into that and all the other stuff. But, um, and then, so what is the rest? Let me get to the uh, other stuff. So, y'all already know the show's not well received. We already talked about the show being cut down from 90 minutes to 60 minutes, which, you know, I'm already upset about because I already have a drag race. Everything goes by so fast watching the show, which kind of irritates me. It's like, I want them to bring the deliberation back between the judges. We need that. We need that back because the show just feels so short, disjointed, doesn't make any kind of sense. Even when they did the reading challenge, it's like each queen got one read. Like, what the hell was that? I blink one good time and the damn reading challenge was over. Anyway, so here's what he said, because he talked about why he got involved in the show, or how he got involved with the show. And then he also talked about how, um, he talked about a lot of stuff. He said he didn't even know who was going to be on the show, and they went and changed the show's name, the name and everything on him. He didn't know what the name of the show was going to be until we did, basically. So he was asked, how did you get involved with the show? He said... I was approached back in March of 2021. It was pitched to be as the A-List Los Angeles. It was supposed to be a reboot of the series, The A-List New York, which we did talk about on my TikTok. I said The A-List Walk, so a show like The Real um, Friends of WeHo could run. Which basically got a lot of hits on TikTok. I want to thank you all for supporting that video, by the way. I think it got over a million. Yeah, I think over. I think it was over a million views or a one point something thousand something i don't know i gotta look at the numbers but it's a lot of damn hits <laughs> if i get the emails okay so um he said i was told it was gonna be a docu-series style that followed me working on my brand and showing parts of my personal life also i was told the show will be on the streaming service paramount plus i initially said no several times but finally signed my contract at the last minute now he was asked at the time did you at least know who the other cast members were going to be Dorian said, during the process of them courting me, production told me names of people who were being approached. Aside from Curtis Hamilton, who I've been friends with for a few years, I had no idea who was on the show until filming. I was home filming stuff with Butter for two weeks before I even met the cast. Production was very tight-lipped on who was on the show. Keep in mind, the whole time I'm thinking the show is still the A-list Los Angeles. Multiple sources confirmed to us that the show was being pitched as a reboot featuring people in LA LGBTQ communities such as NSYNC member Lance Bass and his husband Michael Turchin as well as Riley Russ, the nephew of Jeannie Russ, um, the controlling owner and president of the Los Angeles Lakers. Now several of the people who were contacted about the show said it was intended to be on the Paramount Plus streaming service. So he's reiterating that he's really pushing forward that 
they were supposed to be it was supposed to be on Paramount Plus, which in my opinion would have been a much better fit. Why not be on a streaming service? Like I said, what they should have did with um the other show. Drag Race needs to be on Paramount Plus, not no damn MTV. Now, Lance Bass and his husband Michael Turchin being a part of this show, I think would be a great idea. And I'll tell you why. Lance Bass has two clubs, bar, one's a bar, kind of sort of, and another one's a nightclub. He has two establishments in West Hollywood. One is Rocco's, which I remember Rocco's was around when I was in LA, when I moved out there back in 2020. 1920 and now he has heart which is a big nightclub in west hollywood so lance bass has establishments in west hollywood they could have been filming stuff there they could have gotten exclusive like all kinds of stuff i don't know why mtv to go with or maybe lance was just like no i don't want to do it i don't know what happened or maybe they that's what they told him but it didn't turn out that that's who they were going to actually court he also went to learn the show's name change from the A-list source analyst and that it was going to air on MTV. He said, I found out in a press release, we had no idea it was going to MTV and that it would take away from Drag Race. I watched Drag Race and I love Rue. He's iconic. Again, I was still under the impression that this was the A-list source analyst for Paramount Plus. So I was shocked to find out it was going to MTV. I didn't sign up for MTV. I also didn't see the poster beforehand. I saw it at the same time as everyone else else and that's where i have this issue they promote the show as six gay men living in west hollywood who are friends first i don't live in west hollywood i live in the valley i love the valley i never go to west hollywood i'm not in that scene aside from curtis i wasn't friends with any of the cast i also have never confirmed or talked about my sexuality i felt betrayed because they have me identified as something i'm not i'm dorian renard i mean you're on a show called the real friends of weho with six gay guys so how did they out you? <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no tuta. There's no fish. On, there's no women on the show. So I don't get it. Uh, but okay, go off. Um, yeah, and the poster, you could definitely, like, I know posters. I know, I have enough photographer friends to know that you could tell based on the way everybody was posed that they were individual shots that were taken and put together as a make it look like a group, especially the way Todrick was posing with that one leg up and like turned up like this, like he Beverly Peel or Beverly Johnson. <laughs> um, now they said the premiere episode ended with a conflict between you and Catherine and Joey Zazig. Can you explain what happened? He said, here's the thing. During the pandemic, I was home working. I really wasn't social during that time and Butter was my main focus. So that time period only amplified my anxiety. So here I am going into a scene with people I don't know. I'm at the event, my anxiety is kicking in and I'm speaking with Curtis when this guy appro approaches me as he's talking about Joey. I was a little taken aback because I didn't know who he was. This was the first time meeting, this is the, yeah, this is the first time meeting him. And in quotes, at one point in the scene, you can hear Dorian ask Curtis, is he on the cast? I can say I didn't handle it the best. Oh, that's funny. So it's like, y'all didn't even try to edit that part out. Also, well, they talked about, you know, East Ray, having lunch with Curtis. Um, he was talking about how he had Cassie shooting a campaign for Butter, which if you saw the second episode, you did see Cassie shoot the campaign that was styled by Brad Goreski. And I did notice that Dorian did throw a shade towards Brad because Brad said he couldn't make the shoot because he was sick. And he was like, oh, I don't think he would do that for Jessica Alba or Demi Moore. Like, he would say he was sick and all this other stuff. He would have showed up. It was a little shade. But Dorian said like he don't care. And I like that. That people are not unapologetic in what they're going to say. Unlike these drag race girls, who y'all be sitting up there just curbing y'all mouths and, and editing what y'all want to say because y'all so scared of these goddamn trolls on, on, on the, you know, the drag race fans. Who sit up here literally had um, Mistress Isabella Brooks' Instagram taken down because they didn't like how she was coming across on the show. So y'all spreading lies and saying she's problematic and, and Instagram is suspending people's account. I'm like, huh? How are you able to suspend someone? 
just because somebody's mad at them. How is how is how is the the bully in the right and the owner always wrong? It's like I had to come at somebody because somebody was trying to come for me over a story I did about Beyonce, and I reported them as saying it was hate speech. Oh, and then I get a report back surprisingly from Facebook. I'm not surprised by them at all because I fucking you know Facebook has sucked my entire ass with a straw. Um, they go and say, "Oh, we don't think it's bullying. We don't think it's hate speech." Yeah, okay. Now, if I would have said some shit, y'all would have had me in jail for 30 days. But anyway, back to the show because I'm getting off topic. <laughs> oh, at this topic. In the trailer, we see a clip of you refusing to film with an individual because it would hurt your brand. Were you talking Chris Salvatore? He says, uh, and you know, Chris Salvatore gives you a little backstory. He alleged that the cast refused to film with him due to his career on OnlyFans, and he was fired from the show. Doris says, absolutely not. Production kept me in the dark for so long about the cast. There's no way I can say who comes and goes. Um, he also said that, the, so they were asked what said, sound like a lot of dishonesty happening on the production side. He said it kind of happened to him on College Hill, but he was young and didn't have a voice. But he does now when he addresses concerns to the highers up that basically told him to be a happy camper and to promote the show. But he says, but I will not promote something that I cannot stand behind. I tried to leave the show several times, but because he signed that contract, he was stuck. And he says, they asked, do we care to address any of the negativity surrounding the show? He says, it's crazy. We're getting no support. There are people saying the most negative stuff online. Some have gotten death threats and we aren't getting any support from the network or production company. It's not the cast fault that we ended up on MTV. I would not have signed on to this show if I knew about the name change. The theme of the show changing and the network change. I don't feel comfortable representing a city community that I'm not a part of. So they believe, you know, just... They, they deceived them, had them contract because they needed people. He also said that he's not um, addressing this topic. Um, he said the production value for what he's seen is pretty good. Uh, and he asked, he asked the audience, give the cast some grace. Everything in regards to scheduling that is out of our control. Although I may not have worked a lot with the cast, he wants to see everyone succeed. I should also point out that um, Dorian is absolutely telling the truth when he said I he was not promoting this show. I told y'all I was at the Drag Race season 15 premiere in New York around the time where they were about the, the day before the, the episode premiere of Drag Race season 15. Got to see the the I got to see the episode, the first half, um, in a screening after they did the whole red carpet and the interviews and the photo shoots and all that other stuff. Everybody was there except Dorian. I remember they took the individual photos, then they all came around the end and they took the group photo with the Drag Race girls. Then we went on upstairs and we watched the screening. The only one who did not go to the screening was Todrick. Everybody else was there. Dorian, I told him, did not do any press. Um, he didn't even show up. And yeah, Todrick didn't show up to the screening. So Dorian's right, he's not promoting the show. Like he just, Sounds like he's someone who's just not coming behind this thing. And it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to get to, I don't know. It's I've already sucked into the show. I'm going to continue to watch. I know a lot of people feel a way about Tottenham, but like I said, Tottenham is not the only one that is a part of this franchise. And I'm going to continue to watch. And I don't think it'll be back for a second season. I highly doubt it. But if they do, I really think that MTV needs to reconsider. Drag Race needs to go back to 90 Minutes. Or you need to take both shows and move them to Paramount Plus because um, MTV, y'all ain't it. Outside of the challenge, which I don't get either because y'all said an hour, but the challenge is 90 minutes. So that whole story about, oh, we need to cut it down um, an hour, da, da, that's a bunch of BS. Because I've been watching the challenge and I look at the the, the, the the length of the episodes and it's literally 90 minutes. Y'all got like 45 damn castmates on it. You can't cut you can't cut that down to an hour, but apparently with 16 queens and a lot of stuff, y'all could do that with that. But okay, whatever. So 